In this video, I'm going to show you what a VBA control is. VBA stands for Visual Basic for Applications, and it allows you to control a spreadsheet in a, a way that's very different than you're used to. In this spreadsheet, we're uh, graphing a propagating wave, like a sine wave. So we're using our trig functions here to make this graph. And you can see some properties of the wave, velocity, wavelength, amplitude. Notice that those I have highlighted those in green, those are input data. The, uh, the time can also be controlled here, uh, has a value in F2. And by the way, I've named these cells V for velocity, L for wavelength, A for amplitude, and T for time. But there's some other values here that are calculated, frequency, something called angular frequency, and something called wave number. Now those aren't important right at the moment, but what I want you to see here is that there's a table of values x and y, and in fact the graph to the right is a graph scatter plot, xy scatter plot, of these values of x and y. x goes from 0 to 100. I won't bother scrolling all the way down. And y involves the cosine function to graph this curve. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. But what's really cool is over here. These three things are the VBA controls. These are uh, scroll bars. And I can, for instance, change the time and have the graph automatically update. In fact, I can hold the time down. Now, it doesn't quite animate smoothly, but I can click on the time and have the graph rapidly update. I can also change the wavelength. And the amplitude of the wave. So what these three controls are actually doing is that they control the value in the green uh, in the green cells. So when I click the up arrow on the time control, the time in F2 increases. And T, the time, the value of cell F2, appears in the equation for Y. Same thing with the wavelength. When I change the wavelength, I'm changing the value of cell C4, which is called capital L. Or when I change the amplitude, pressing the button changes the value in the cell C5. And then uh, C5 is called capital A. And that capital A appears in the equation for the values of Y. So that is what VBA controls are. They allow you to control the value of cells in your spreadsheet. And then the value of those cells can appear in some formulas, which can affect a graph. The, the applications are, are infinite in what you can do with VBA controls. Now let's uh, take a look, look, look at the equations behind the wave here. Uh, two uh, basic equations to describe waves. One is uh, this equation right here. V is equal to lambda times F, where V is the speed of the wave. Lambda is the wavelength, the distance from one peak to the next. And F is the frequency, how many waves are occurring every second. And the typical units we use for velocity are meters per second. If you're a barbarian, you can have feet per second or miles per hour, but meters per second is typically what we're going to use. Wavelength can be in meters, could be any unit of distance, but here we're going to call it meters. And frequency is usually in waves per second or simply per second, which is abbreviated Hertz or HZ. Now, the equation that's being graphed in the spreadsheet is Y 
and y is a function of x and t. It depends on your position along the x-axis, but it also depends on time. And y is equal to a times the cosine of kx minus omega t. The a is the amplitude. The cosine function just goes from minus 1 to plus 1. That's the, the range of its values. So if you want your wave to be taller than an amplitude of, of 1, then you multiply it by a. And then your, co, um, your function then will go from minus a to plus a. k is what's called the wave number. It's 2 pi divided by the wavelength. Omega is called the angular frequency. It's 2 pi divided by the period, or the time for one wiggle of the wave, or 2 pi times the frequency measured in hertz. And the reason for these 2 pi's is because the cosine function goes through its complete range over a span of the argument, everything in the parentheses here, a span of that argument, of 0 to 2 pi. So that's why these two pi's are, are, are popping into here. And so that's the equation. A cosine kx minus omega t. Now let's go back to the spreadsheet. And we will show the formulas. Here we have y is equal to A cosine k b11 minus, I'm using a w for omega, times t. Unfortunately, you can't name cells with Greek letters. The omega sort of looks like a curvy w, so I'm using a w as the name for, um, for cell uh, c7, using a w to represent the angular frequency. So, uh, kx minus omega t is the thing in the, in the parentheses, the argument of the cosine function. Just as we saw on the handwritten equations, the only thing different is here is b11, b12, b13, b14, and is, these are relative references to the values of x to the immediate left. So turning off the formulas, so we can see that when we change the value of, say, the amplitude, I'll make the amplitude here 3, everything in the y column gets updated because a, the amplitude, was changed and it reevaluates all those formulas. Now here, I'm just going in and I'm typing in the value that I want. I could make it 1.5 if I want. But, uh, if I wanted to animate this, for instance, if I want to change the time to 76, and then 77, and then 78, it's a little awkward having to type each number. So having a control that then changes the value of the cell is a, an easy and intuitive way now I can just click on this button and I can reverse time and go backwards and I don't have to type in the value that goes in that cell. And this helps you visualize how changing these variables changes the shape of the graph. This particular example is about waves, but again it could be about anything. This could be something in science, it could be something in finance, it could be something in statistics or mathematics. So. That is what VBA controls are, and in the next video I'll show you how to build this spreadsheet and how to install or create VBA controls in your spreadsheet.